Okay, let's unpack this. Imagine it's early morning, August 16th, 2025. You're maybe scrolling through X and this video just drops, shared by Dom Luker, and it instantly grabs millions of views. What's it showing? A dark uh, triangular object. You can see lights along the edges just uh, hovering over Mexico. Yeah, and what's really striking looking at the sources is how fast the speculation started. Almost immediately, people were jumping in, suggesting it could be the, you know, the legendary TR-3B, that secret anti-gravity plane. And Dom Luker's post itself called it the third UFO sighting of the week. Quite a claim. Right, and that's exactly what we want to dig into today. We're going beyond just the viral buzz of this one video. We'll look closely at this sighting, sure, but then we need to zoom out, look at the whole history, the culture around UFOs. We'll touch on the science, the military angle on anti-gravity, and what this all might mean for how we see the unknown. Exactly. The aim is to give you a balanced look. Is this a real breakthrough? Human tech? Or is it, you know, just seeing something familiar in a weird light? A misinterpretation? Or maybe something completely different? We need to consider all angles. Okay, so let's focus on the sighting itself first. Sure. The video Dom Luker put on X. Our sources say it actually started on TikTok, handle mm. at chattypat013. It's kind of a classic example of how these things spread now, isn't it, in the digital age? Oh, absolutely. And the footage, you have to admit, it's compelling. You see this dark triangle shape against the night sky, cloudy background. It looks like it's barely moving, maybe hovering. And those lights, they definitely make it look structured, metallic, perhaps. And Luker's text didn't really hold back. Third UFO sighting this week. Huh? And right away, he suggests TR-3B. Makes you wonder, why jump straight to that specific kind of mythical aircraft? That's a good question. Well, the lore around the TR-3B is pretty wild. It's supposed to be this black triangle craft, uses anti-gravity, flies silently, can go near space. And often, the story includes reverse-engineered alien tech. It's a very potent narrative. Yeah. And reading through the sources, what jumped out at me was how quickly the counter arguments pop up. Like, okay, maybe it looks triangular, but could it be a known plane? A stealth bomber, maybe? Mm -hmm. Or a drone? Especially at night with weird lighting. And the lights could just be navigation lights, right? Or reflections. Even the shape could be an illusion. Plus, Mexico, it has this long history of UFO reports. Culture definitely plays a role in how people see things. That's such a critical point. Because this video might be new, but fascination with UFOs, yeah. that's old news. The term itself, UFO, came about in the late 40s, after Roswell, 1947, that whole thing. And since then, UFOs have become this huge cultural phenomenon, spurring research, but also, you know, lots of fringe theories. And the TR-3B story seemed to grow right out of that environment. It really took off in the 1990s, didn't it? Part of this bigger conspiracy narrative, usually described as huge, black, triangular, silent, defying physics. And people often trace it back to those black triangle sightings in the U.S. and Europe back in the 80s and 90s. Reports of massive silent craft. And here's a really key piece of that puzzle for understanding the myth. The Belgian UFO wave. Remember that? 1989 to 1990. Hundreds of reports. Ordinary people, police officers, seeing large triangular objects. They even scramble F-16s. But the jets couldn't walk on. The radar was inconclusive. It was confusing. So believers point to that and say, see... TR-3B, while skeptics say, hold on, could be planes, weather, mass hysteria. So these alleged abilities, mm -hmm. anti-gravity, silence, near invisibility, mm. they tap into a real historical interest, right, in anti-gravity tech. And it wasn't just sci-fi dreams. There was real military interest, especially mm -hmm. during the Cold War. You had government projects looking into this stuff. Project yeah. Blue Book back in the day, and now the Pentagon's UAP task force. True. But the key takeaway looking at the sources is pretty stark. There's zero official confirmation that the TR-3B actually exists, nothing documented. And frankly, most aerospace experts just dismiss it as pure myth. Okay. Okay, so let's switch gears to the science then, this whole anti-gravity idea. Ah. Does current physics even allow for something like the TR-3B? Uh, that's the major roadblock, really, as we understand physics now. No, not in the way people imagine it, like flipping a switch. Einstein's general relativity describes gravity as space-time curvature caused by mass. So anti-gravity would mean flattening space-time, pushing ah. against it. I mean, theoretically, maybe manipulating space-time isn't impossible, but it's way, way beyond anything we can currently do. Pure theory. And haven't there been attempts in the past that just didn't pan out? I remember reading about Thomas Townsend Brown's experiments. Looked promising, but turned out to be ion wind, right? Mm -hmm. Not gravity manipulation. And that a supposed gravity generator by Tor and Data never replicated, never verified. Exactly. Which brings us back to the Mexico sighting. There are simpler, scientifically plausible explanations. Could it be a known aircraft? Like the B-2 bomber. 
It's triangular, it's quiet, easily mistaken for something strange at night. We know classified test flights have been mistaken for UFOs countless times, or it could be something totally mundane, weather balloon. They cause a surprising number of reports. Even certain cloud formations, like lenticular clouds, can look really solid and weirdly shaped. And then there's the whole psychological angle, how our brains process this stuff. What's that called? Pareidolia, seeing patterns, familiar shapes, and random or ambiguous things, like faces and toast. Right. Our brains are pattern-matching machines. And when you combine that with cultural expectations, what we expect to see from movies and TV, plus the speed of social media like X and TikTok, it just amplifies everything, doesn't it? Absolutely. Now, shifting to the military and government side, it's no secret the U.S. military has been interested in UFOs and advanced tech for a long time, especially during the Cold War. There was the Mansfield Amendment in 73, restricting defense spending which led some people to speculate about secret black budget projects, hidden funding, you know, maybe for developing things like anti-gravity off the books. And Area 51 inevitably comes up in connection with the TR-3B. It's like yeah. they're linked in the public mind. But while Area 51 is definitely real and they test advanced planes there, U-2, SR-71, Stealth Tech, there's just no actual evidence, no credible link to the TR-3B being housed there. Yeah, the intense secrecy around Area 51 is what really feeds those theories. The less people know, the more they speculate. But things seem to be changing slightly, more transparency lately. Somewhat, yes. That 2021 ODNI report on UAPs was a significant step. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence, they basically acknowledge, yes, there are things we can't explain, they need more investigation. And they even floated the possibility that some UAPs might be advanced tech from other countries, drones, hypersonic stuff. So the government is acknowledging something is going on, even I... if they don't know what, which is interesting. <laughs> but even with military pilots seeing things, radar data, mm. the big problem remains, right? The lack of physical evidence. Yeah. No wreckage, no captured craft, nothing concrete to analyze. So despite more reports and pilot testimony getting attention, we're still short on definitive proof. And that brings us to the cultural impact. UFOs, the TR-3B, they're everywhere in pop culture. Well, massively. The X-Files, the truth is out there. Independence Day, Close Encounters. These stories shape how we think about this. And social media. Yeah. It cuts both ways. It lets people share sightings instantly, like citizen science. Mm -hmm. But it also spreads misinformation like wildfire. You get these echo chambers where conspiracies just get reinforced. Like the Dom Luker post we started with. His whole breaking narratives approach really fired up his followers. People already inclined to distrust official stories. And you mentioned Mexico's history earlier. That's really relevant here. It's not just recent stuff. Way back in 1883, an astronomer, Jose Bonilla, photographed objects crossing the sun. Then there is that famous 2004 incident. Mexican Air Force pilots filmed weird infrared objects. Huge news initially. Right, I remember that. Turned out they were likely just flares from offshore oil platforms, seen under unusual atmospheric conditions. Ah, so a pattern emerges. Right. Initial excitement than a more down-to-earth explanation. Pretty often, yeah. And this August 2025 period, the sources mention a general uptick in UFO reports globally. Combine that with social media speed, you get this feedback loop. Each new report fuels more talk, more speculation. It kind of feeds itself. Okay, so let's try and tie this all together. This Mexico sighting, the video, it really feels like a snapshot of the whole UAP mystery, doesn't it? You've got the viral speculation, the TR-3B theories. Mm -hmm. Then you have the scientific skepticism, the potential explanations like known aircraft or natural phenomena. Right, and the cultural context, the history of sightings, the influence of media. And the bottom line seems to be, despite the compelling footage and the persistent rumors, there's still no solid proof for the TR-3B. And the alternative explanations, the more mundane ones, they remain plausible, perhaps even likely. But that doesn't kill the fascination, does it? There's something deeply human about looking up and wondering whether these things are secret tech, misidentifications, or, or something truly unknown. They force us to think about the universe and our place in it, about what we don't know. Yeah, it really does. The search for answers continues. And maybe that search, that curiosity mixed with a healthy dose of skepticism, is just as important as finding a final answer. So the question for you listening is, when you look up, what do you think? What does it all mean to you?